There's a very helpful proverb, Proverbs 9 and 8, and it says this, Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. And it seems to me that one of the wisest things to do in life is to learn this principle, that even if someone corrects you, and they're not exactly right in the particulars, try to benefit from it. I remember uh, when I was just a young teen and I had an auto accident and uh, my father was away. And when he came back, we went to look at the wreckage of the car and he said, what did you learn from this, Jabe? And I said, well, the police didn't charge me. It was uh, bad road conditions, bad weather and so on. And he said, well, okay, but you know, we're paying for this anyway. <laughs> Why not learn a lesson through it? Because otherwise you're going to have to learn it all over again down the road. And so when someone is corrected, even if it's spoken in the wrong way and with the wrong details, the wrong facts, if we can find a way to benefit from it anyway and put it in the plus column instead of the negative column, then we're ahead, aren't we? Likewise, rebuke a wise man, he'll love you. In other words, we feel a certain indebtedness to people who are willing to risk our relationship to tell us the truth. I'm not good at that. And I, I grant you that, that it's, it's easy for me to rebuff, to build a wall and not to listen. But I know the benefit of this. And when I have listened, it's, it's been a huge advantage. So I want to tell you two little stories on myself. And the first one, they both happened about the same time. I was a preteen at the time. And uh, I was a kind of naive little kid. I hadn't, uh, we didn't have a TV in our home and I hadn't been around the world. My parents loved each other. I'd never seen my father drunk or my mother abused. I'd never been exposed to anything like that. My parents, my grandparents, great grandparents, they all loved the Lord and were serious about it. And they walked with the Lord. And so I was a bit naive. And um, I remember we were out in the playground and a boy came to me, uh, his name was Rory, and uh, he said, hey, how would you like to have this? And he showed me a pocket knife. It wasn't a big knife, but it was a pocket knife. But what I didn't know was it, uh, it had a little button, and uh, that button would cause the, the uh, blade to shoot out. A switchblade, not exactly, but it, it, it was designed that way, and they were illegal. And uh, I didn't know. I just saw it was a knife. I didn't know why he wanted to give it to me, but I accepted it. Well, we went into class, and we were sitting in the class when the principal showed up at the door, and he called Rory out. Turns out that Rory had used the knives to scare some girls, to chase some girls with it, and uh, he knew he was going to get in trouble, and so he got rid of the knife by giving it to me. And so I was sitting there, with all my classmates, Rory was out talking to the principal, and obviously the principal had demanded to know where the knife was. And Rory told the principal that he'd given it to me. I was just sitting there, <laughs> innocent little boy. The door opened, the principal looked directly at me in front of all my classmates, and he said only this, Nicholson, you're a fool. And then Rory came and got the knife and took it to the principal. I really stung from that. I wasn't really one of the in crowd at school, and it really set me back. I had admired that principle. He professed to be a Christian, and, and I thought he was a good man. Well, I think he's still a good man. But on that occasion, he had misread the situation, and instead of treating me as being naive and not really knowing the situation, he assumed that I was in on the plot. So when people attack us, again, we, we can reject that, but it's to our disadvantage to do it. To learn the lesson, look, don't be so naive the next time. When people do things that seem to be too good to be true, it may be because they're too good to be true. <laughs> And so if we can learn the lesson, and there are many people in their senior years who are still being fooled into Ponzi schemes and all the rest, 
because they're naive and they assume the best of other people. Now, we should treat people with respect, but we shouldn't be foolish. And we should learn to be wise about our relationships, especially with people who may have an ulterior motive in what they do. On the other hand, the scripture speaks about speaking to someone in a way that causes them to love you. And about that time, I was standing after a baptism one night. I was not baptized. And I was standing just looking into the baptistry. And I was thinking about baptism. And there was a dear brother in our local church, and he rarely spoke. He was a very soft-spoken man named Dave Sylvester. And uh, I always admired him. He was a tall man with a with a rich voice. He always wore a Stetson hat. And I always admired him from a distance. I didn't really know him all that well. He had a wonderful wife, a lovely family. And uh, he saw me standing there. And he came over to me and he put his big hand on my shoulder. And all he said was this, what hinders you from being baptized? And at that moment, he spoke but the Spirit of God addressed me. And I realized there was no reason that I shouldn't identify with the Lord Jesus. And so when we deal with people, we can do the most damage. We can inflict damage. We say, well, the truth hurts. I'm going to make sure that it does. Or we can do it graciously. And this is the difference, of course, between correction and criticism, between exhortation between encouragement and criticism. Criticism tells you where you're wrong. But when we exhort one another, we tell each other where we're wrong in such a way that we want to make it right. And this makes all the difference. May the Lord help us in circumstances when people speak ill of us, they say negative things about us, to realize that anything that humbles me is good for me. And I'm going to take it as such. I want to be a wise man who takes correction rather than someone who brushes it off and in the end doesn't benefit. And what has to happen? They keep being taught the same lesson over and over, which they refuse to learn. And they waste so much emotional energy and time and opportunity when they could have grown into the experience and benefited from it, if they would take it as a wise rebuke, as beneficial to them, even though spoken in ill. May the Lord help us all to take this proverb to heart and to take those who correct us to heart so that we can benefit from them. And you pray for me. I need to learn in this area. Learn to accept correction so that I can be proven to be a wise man and not foolish.